All right, let's try this. Oh, that's better. I can really hear myself now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to lunch at the Spotlight on Scholarship Day. And we have a great lunch speaker with us who I think is going to make us smile. So this is Mark Vesisco from the College of Education. I'll turn it over to him. I wanted to say that uh, if it comes with food or coffee, it has to be good. Hey, we got lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah, life is good. Um, this is a project that I'm doing with some students. I'm piloting it this term with about 25 students, and uh, it's going to be a kickoff for a big project for next term. Um, but I need to give you a little bit of backstory about why I did this. Uh, and this is a, it's, it's, I'm only speaking for me. Um, but the last five years have been tough on campus, um, and I found myself becoming somewhat negative. Um, and so, I said, you know, um, oh, oh, let me give you a little part of the students in this, doing this project. I teach a course called the Mindful Helping Professional. And it's a course for social workers, teachers, counselors, anybody who works with people, uh, to help them be more mindful and present uh, in the work that they do. And um, so over the last five years of developing the class, and it's an online class, by the way, and over the last five years for developing it, I got to do a lot of reading and study on great wisdom traditions from all over the world, and got to travel to different places around the world to study, um, all due to the uh, wonderful resources that we have here at uh, Northern Kentucky University. So anyway, um, I decided uh, that I, I um, needed to be more present, more mindful, and I needed to be um, less negative. Uh, and so this became my project, is to see what is it that we can do for ourselves to see if we can improve our positive nature. So I uh, did this project. And so the project is, the purpose is to heighten present moment awareness, encourage more positive mindsets, and increase one's happiness. Um, and I discovered in doing this that uh, whatever we do in our profession, I think we end up teaching what we most learn, that what, what we most need to know. And what I realized is at this point, uh, after leaving administration five years ago, what I most needed was to find a way to be more positive and more um, helpful and, and happier. Um, and what I discovered about myself is the ABCs. A, and what you have is, when you, have a, when you have a group of people who are above average intelligence, and they have a B, that's the A, a B is a bent toward idealism, and that's kind of what college professors are like. Um, what it equates to, um, frequently, is a lot of critical mind activity, where we analyze and we criticize, and we sometimes get to the point, matter of fact, we all probably get to the point, where we see what's broken long before we see what's fixed. And the reason we do that, two reasons, one's biological, obviously, because we want to, our amygdala wants us to pay attention to, you know, the negative things that could harm us. And, um, and the second is because we want to make a difference in health. So we're fixers. That's why we went into the profession we got into. So anyway, when I realized that, I said, okay, I need to try to find some ways to be more positive. And, um, and, and I based this on several assumptions, several supposes. I love that word, suppose. Suppose is how one changes the way one sees things. Um, first of all, suppose you were meant to be here uh, to increase your happiness. And I mean here, not on this planet. I mean here today, at this moment, uh, which is the only thing we actually have anyway. Um, and and uh, this is a kind of a motto for our class. It's uh, the best present we can give is the gift of our presence and being there. Uh, we as academicians spend so much time in our heads so much time in the past, so much time in the future, so much time trying to figure out how to do all those great things that we do as academicians that we frequently can forget to look around us and see those really great things that are happening everywhere. So um, let's be present, uh, and just some examples. I mean, how many times do you drive home from work and don't even remember driving home from work? You know, we're not present. Um, you've been with a friend and realized you're not really paying attention you know, to what they're saying. <laughs> Happens all the time. Um, uh, and I want to know, are you really here right now at this moment, too? Are you ready for your getting, are you mulling over the presentation that you did this morning, Chris and John and everybody? 
Uh, or are you getting ready to do yours uh, for this afternoon? Uh, Suki and you know the, the group coming on later. Um, or are you here right at this moment? Um, and so, what I want to do really quickly, just to, just for fun, is I think I can do an activity that will bring us all here to this moment, and I can show you that it works by being mindful. And I take this uh, from Thich Nhat Hanh, um, and I want you to do this for me for just a second. When you breathe in, I want you to say, I'm breathing in calm. And we're only going to do this for three good breaths. And when you breathe out, I'm breathing out a smile. Okay? So just three breaths. Very good. Gosh, I can feel everybody coming into the present. So I'm going to do an experiment. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I, I believe that we're now all on the same wavelength. And so, um, so what I want you to do is to pick one of these cards, just one, pick one, any one you want, memorize what it is. You all got one? It's really interesting because when people are on the same wavelength, they all pick the same card. So in this room, my suspicion is that not only did you, I can tell you which card you picked, but I can show you that we all picked the same one. 85% of us picked the same card. So let me see. I withdrew the card that we all thought about and see if I remove the card. Did we get it? Okay. That, some we didn't, but I think for most everybody we got it. So, anyway, we're all here. That's good. Um, so, second one. Suppose you can choose your own reality. And what the great wisdom traditions say is that much, if not most of, or most, if not much, if not all of what we bring to see in the world, we bring ourselves. We carry it with us. And we see what we think we should see. We see what we're supposed to see. We project our issues on the world, and that's what we end up seeing. But suppose you can choose your reality and you can modify it. And that was the basis of this project, to try to have people deliberately and intentionally try to change the way they see their daily lives. So, um, and these are, these are some little cute things. Everybody see what that says? <clears throat> Excuse me. I was, I was at, nailed it yesterday with 500 college students, so I lost my voice. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to <laughs> talk today. Nailed it is a Habitat for Humanity project that was done in Cincinnati. Uh, what'd that say? We all here? Did you get to see what that said? What'd it say? You walked through the woods? How many saw that? Oh, well, how many? Read it out. Read it to yourselves. What did it really say? He walked through the woods. Okay, yeah. And so, again, uh, are we present? Eh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> how many squares are there? See, and so this one's kind of fun because Obviously, there are 16, but wait, wait, there's 17, there's 24, there's how many? Possible squares. And what happens again is, when we look at reality, our mind automatically filters out some things. And it only lets us take in what we think makes sense. And so again, we have to be very careful, our mind can trick us. And there are 30 possible combinations. Everybody gets the four by fours, then the next thing your mind wants to do is the two by twos, and that gets you up to 24. The last thing we come to, oh, and the big box, of course, that's the big one. The last one that's hard to come to is the three by boxes. You know, so, the, uh, yeah, three bys, there are three, three possible. I'm gonna do one more real quick. Everybody see what that says? Oh, yeah, be quick. What did it say? Yeah, if you read it out loud, it's different than when you read it silently. You know, he saw the, the bird sitting on the, the birdhouse. And again, what our brain does is only focuses on things that it thinks make sense. Oh, what is this one? A student gave me this one. This is a famous pagan tester. Okay, and that's, um, and the student said, because you can see some th different things. So. Believe it or not, the first thing when you do statistical, if you look statistically, do you know what the first thing people come up with is? God is nowhere. 
And so, and then the joke is, oh, well, sorry for you, you know, you're, you're damned, and so. And, but you could also see, the second thing you could see is God is now here. And, you know, those are the saved, obviously. Um, and I didn't learn to read till I was in sixth grade, and so, I mean, my reading is very different. Uh, I'm dyslexic, and so what I saw was God, I snow here. <laughs> and so it, it, it kind of the student wasn't happy because they couldn't say I was either damned or saved, but uh, it worked out. Um, so uh, anyway, I'm not going to. Uh, oh, this one's always fun. This is why we have our brain wants to have closure. And I drew this little thing myself, and so uh, you can see I'll, I'll move this. Uh, let me move it so you can see the other side. You see that? All right. You want to see the other side again? See that that side? It's like a tuning fork, right? All right. Let me show you one more time. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice is I'm going to take away the little slidey thing, and that's a very technical term for those. Um, and what uh, I want you to do is I want you to notice what your brain does. Okay, when I take it away. That's this task. What does your brain do when you see it all together? Yeah, it causes dissonance. You know, it's funny because I see in people when you see it, it's like a dog. You know, when you're talking to your dog and your dog, you're the one to understand it, it goes. <laughs> like that. And, um, or, what you, or you squint. You know, and matter of fact, squinting really works if you know the physics of lenses. You know, so if you really want to see something clearly, you want to use a smaller piece of a lens uh, to get a more precise picture. And so if you squint, you actually can see things more clearly. Um, but the brain doesn't like this feeling. The brain has to have closure. It doesn't like to not know the answer. And so what we do is we jump to conclusions. And so, yes, it's really horrible. You know, the situation's always terrible and horrible, and we jump to that conclusion. And in fact, if you just forestall judgment, you might find that it's not that horrible at all. This is a classic. I'm, I'm not going to leave it up there for long. But uh, anybody see anything? Try squinting. It's not a, it's, it's, it's not a Rorschach. It's, um, if you squint, it's actually an overexposed picture uh, with lighting coming from almost directly overhead. Uh, it's an overexposed picture of a bearded man. Some would say Che Guevara, if you go if you're into history. Some would say Jesus Christ. Some would say, but it's a picture from the forehead down to the chin, where a little bit of the chin is exposed, and cheek and uh, two cheeks, nose bridge, and then the eyes are shadowed with the eyebrows. So anyway, sometimes squinting helps, and so I do this with people too. If I find a person and I gotta find something I really like about the person, I'll squint. You know? <laughs> so if you see me squinting at you, um, uh, so um, anyway, typically where we are is we have all these blind spots. We have ten thousand of them, um, and what we need to do is start paying more attention to ourselves using our executive functioning and pay attention to the world around us much more. And when we do that, when we're in the present moment, all kinds of great things happen. So the project, just really quickly, is um, the students get a packet, and if anybody would like to participate, it's a pilot, because we're going to do the real project next term, but I have packets back there in the back if you'd like to take one, and on your table you see a card that comes in the packets. And what we're attempting to do is to have people deliberately, intentionally, using their executive functioning or their metacognitive capabilities, we want them to pay attention to the positive things around them. All right. And so what you do is you take these cards, you get 10 in a packet, and over the course of 10 days, you have to deliberately look for things that make you smile. And you have to do something. You have to go to the person, if it's a person or event, and you give them the card and you say, you know what, you made me smile. Now, on the back of it, the students set up uh, a Twitter account and a Facebook page. Our hashtag is hashtag NKU smile. And so if the person would allow you to, um, you could take a picture and you could post what made you smile as well. And so we're working out the bugs for all of that this term as well. But the, the class assignment is this. 
There's a two-question survey that they take at the beginning of the project, at the beginning of 10 days. Um, how happy are you at this moment on a scale from 1 to 10? How happy, question two, how happy are you in general? Okay, that's the survey to begin with. Do the smile packet, hand out your cards, uh, you complete a reflection, you know, what happened when you gave out your cards, you know, how did you feel, how did you react, how did other people react? And then at the end of the 10 days, two question survey, and what do you think the questions are? Same thing as the first questions. Um, and then when you get finished, the reflection they do is, um, um, what events made you smile? <clears throat> what did you learn about yourself? Anything interesting or unusual happen? Um, what's your overall reaction to participating? And if you could have additional smile cards, would you take them and use them? So that's what we're piloting uh, this term. So if you want to try it, you're welcome to. There's packets in the back. Um, now, the, the instructions are actually for the students, but I can, if anybody would like to, just email me, and I'd love to have you participate. If you want to do the whole 10-day try, and I could give you the, all the, this information, and you can send it. The students will be analyzing it, what they collect this term at the end of the term, to see uh, what they can draw, and then we'll get ready to uh, kick off the project big time. It's going to be a big smile week next semester on NKU <laughs> campus. Because I have typically 50 to 75 students in my class, and so we're going to see what kind of impact and see if these cards will float around big time on campus. So that's uh, it in a nutshell. So have a great afternoon and a great day. Thank uh you. -huh.